So in my previous video, I talked about when to go for game and when was the right time to try and clear up all of your balls and pot the black in one go. And I said in that video that you know if you, if you didn't feel that you could make the clearance, then not to pot balls unnecessarily and make space for your opponent and to think about um, either developing a problem ball that was making life difficult or to play safe, maybe play a snooker. And somebody asked me in the comments on that video, could I make a video about playing snookers and, and tucking up behind balls? So I'm going to try and do that in this video. Now, the first thing to say is that obviously playing snookers um, and playing safe is dependent on the layout of the table, which is obviously different every single game. So it's hard to say exactly how you go about it because it depends where the balls are and it's different every time. So I'm going to try and just talk about things to look out for and ways to approach safety play and getting snookers. Um, so let's take this as an example and say the red player has potted a red ball and then um, missed the next one and left you in this position as yellows. So if you came to the table as the yellow player, there's no real pot on. You could maybe try and play a cannon here maybe try and cut this in but you'd be flying off around the table it's not an easy opening shot and not a position you're likely to be going for a clearance from so you look to play safe there's no problem balls to real to sort out so you're looking to play safe and make things difficult for the red player now early on in a game when there's lots of balls of both sets on the table there's six reds and seven yellows getting a snooker is very difficult because you know, there's lots of balls to hit so you're only really going to snooker your opponent if you're tight up behind a ball um, and that's not easy to get into that sort of position unless there's anything else close by um, you can't just roll up behind a ball you know like you might, you might see a snooker player roll up tight behind a color you can't do that in pool because you've got to hit a cushion afterwards. So that's not an option anyway. Um, looking to get in tight behind a ball like that off another ball is not very easy um, unless there's something close by. So there's not in this situation. So sometimes it might be that you can't get a snooker and you're just looking to make things difficult for your opponent, not leave them a shot. So for example, if we played something and we ended up over here then we're leaving a shot on the red this way we're leaving a shot on the red over there so we don't want to leave ourselves in that sort of position but if we could leave the cue ball over here for example okay they can hit several of their reds but they can't really pot anything um, so sometimes it might be a case that you have to just settle for putting the ball in a position that doesn't leave your opponent a shot and waiting for things to develop a little bit further. Um, when you're more likely to try and get a snooker is when they've actually started to pot a few balls. So say the red player had actually potted a couple of these. So they'd potted a few more and you found yourselves in a similar sort of position here where you haven't got a first shot but they've got a few less balls on the table. Now you can start to think about getting a snooker because all of their balls are down at one end of the table. We've got a lot of balls over here and they're almost forming a barrier between those. It gives us lots of places to hide behind, which gives you the snooker. So what you do is you look at um, where it gives you cover. So you can see anywhere, anywhere to the left of my queue there, behind there means I can't hit any of these balls all the way over behind those balls over to there. So you've got quite a big area there that you can get into that means that the red player can't hit their red directly and therefore snooker. So how do we go about doing that? First thing you do is look for a ball nearby um, that you can get position of. Now you don't want it to be one of the balls that's forming the barrier because you don't want to move it. So this ball itself really is, is helping block those um, blocking through here I and mean, they're probably blocked anyway but 
you probably leave that one. This ball over here is quite close by, um, and we might be able to use that instead. So look for the ball that gives you the best option to get position. And then it's really just as you would do when you're trying to get position after a pot. So after a pot, you look at where the cue ball is going to travel, and then you try and get position on your next shot. You do exactly the same here, but the only difference is obviously you haven't got to pot the ball, so you can adjust where you hit the object ball to give you a nice angle to get the cue ball where you want it. So if we want the cue ball in this sort of area here, then um, playing off this ball, we've got a couple of options. We could, we could just screw back from it a little bit, and we're in behind there. Only slight issue with that is to get the screw back on that, we're having to hit this yellow a bit harder. So we're not exactly sure where it's going to go, but you can see that's worked out fine. It's given us nice cover in behind all of those balls, and we've got a snooker. Um, that was sort of hitting it direct. The other thing is you look at an angle off that ball. So if you look at the tangent line off that ball, if we hit it here, tangent line there, if we come round finer and finer to sort of a fine clip off the ball, we, that would take us into this cushion and then back over in this direction. So we could just flick off this ball and come back into that space as well. The thing to think about as well and remember on these shots is that you need to play them just as carefully as you would do a pot and position. Especially if you're trying to get a cue ball in a particular area, you need to be quite accurate with it pace-wise. So don't play these shots relaxed thinking, oh, I'm just I'm just trying to get a snooker. Play them as carefully as you would do anything else. So if we were doing this, you need to make sure we're not hitting the ball too thick and going into the corner pocket. We're just flicking off the side. Think about the pace. We don't want to travel too far over here and leave ourselves still on. So we're just coming off it nice and gently. getting in behind these balls and getting a snooker. So that works quite well. Um, it's not the best snooker in the world. Your opponent can probably get out of it fairly comfortably, but it's a fairly safe way of making life at least difficult for your opponent. They might hit the ball, but they, they might leave you in a good position yourself afterwards. Where you can be a bit meaner with a snooker and and make things really difficult for your opponent is um, when you've got balls close together. So say, for example, this ball was here. And we found ourselves in a position like this. Then we can tuck up behind another ball and make it a really tight snooker that's really difficult to get out of. Now the mistake a, pe a lot of people will make with these as well is they think, right, okay, I just need to, just need to stop behind this black and... Um, and that's the snooker. So I'll, I'll play a, I'll play a stun in there, and I've not really stunned that. I've actually come back and I've and I've rolled out of position, and I've not got the snooker at all. And you can see how you have to be precise with it. Just because you're close into the balls and things are nice and tight, you've still got to be really accurate with it. And and you need to think about margins for error if that goes wrong if i if i play that stun and got it perfect that's fine that's okay but if i'm playing a stun shot i'm playing it fairly firm this ball's flying into here what might happen with that that could go into there it could come back and knock my cue ball back out again which is not ideal um if i played too low and didn't get the stun right and came backwards a little bit like i did before might not leave the snooker on so how else could I play it? I could play it softer, which means I'm more likely to be more accurate. And that means I might travel forward a little bit. If I travel forward a little bit, I'm going to still be nice and tight behind the black. If I go a little bit too far, I'm still behind this black and this yellow. If I go really overcook it, I'm still behind these balls. So look at your margins of error when you're going for something as well and think which is going to give you the best chance of getting that shot um, and give you a little bit of room for getting it slightly wrong. So if we just played this shot nice and softly, we've ended up nice and tight behind here 
and that's now a really nasty snooker to try and get out of because they've got to go in opposite directions off a couple of cushions and far more likely to fail. Now, something else to be aware of that a lot of people forget when they're doing this sort of thing. Obviously, you've got to hit a cushion. And you saw that ball there just, just made to the cushion. But you're expecting, if you get a good snooker, if your opponent, you're, you're hoping that your opponent is going to then miss and foul and give you either two visits or ball in hand, depending on what, what rule set you're playing, then you're going to be going for game next. You're going to be going for the clearance because your balls are nicely spread. So what you don't want to do is um, play anything that's going to make life difficult. So, you know, you don't want to play that shot in such a way that you knock the black tight onto the yellow. Um, you might get a good snooker, but then when it comes into clearing things up yourselves, you've made your own life more difficult. You don't want to play it so that you put a ball tight on the rail yourself, making it slightly more awkward to, to pot. So also think about the ball that you're playing, or the balls that you're playing, and try and make sure that you're keeping things open for yourself. Don't make more problems for yourself in the process of getting a snooker on your opponent. And um, finally, then it might be that rather than being down at that end of the table, you might be up the other end. So you might be closer to the balls you're trying to get a snooker on. Um, in this case, it's almost the opposite than we had earlier. So we wouldn't try and play off a ball close by because that's not going to help. We're still looking at this wall of balls down that end of the table to try and hide behind. So we choose something further away that then gets us in that position. So got a fairly simple one here. All we need to do is play into this ball. Even straight, um, we would be there, but slightly better if we can actually come slightly in that, that direction and we're behind all these balls and we get a nice snooker. So again, try not to put this ball tight on the cushion and just roll up slightly to the side of it. And we're nicely in behind these balls. We've got snooker. And then hopefully if they don't get out of it, our balls are still in potable positions. So, as I said, everything might be different and there's different scenarios, but look for, um, look for balls nearby and really take care um, and think about where that cue ball is going to end up. It's just as hard to get position for a snooker as it is, as it is to get a position after a pop. If you want to see more practice routines and pool tutorials, then please remember to subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the equipment I use in this video, then there are links in the description below.